today's video we're going to take a look at what i thought was a really cool very different folding knife from the folks at cold steel the cold steel kudu that's what's coming up next here on survival on purpose Welcome back to Survival on Purpose, your home for trustworthy information and gear reviews related to camping, survival, and general preparedness for regular folks. My name's Brian, thanks for joining me for another Sharp Saturday video where it's Saturday and we take a look at something sharp. As I said today, we're gonna take a look at the Cold Steel Kudu, which is a um, modern version of the traditional African Okapi knife, uh, ring lock folding knife, and it's a very different little little design. I've never even seen this before. I, maybe that shows, you know, maybe I had my head in the sand, but it's, it's a really cool knife, and um, I thought I would show it to you. It's not new or anything, but it's new to me. I bought this on Big Daddy Unlimited, and uh, that's a good time to tell you that Big Daddy Unlimited makes these Sharp Saturday videos possible by creating a situation where you can go to survivalonpurpose.com slash BDU and you can join their membership buying club for just 99 cents for the first 30 days. Get, 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 kind of get inside the club, check the prices, see if you think it'll be a good deal for you if it'll save you money. If you do and you continue on at the regular membership price of 10 bucks a month or 99 bucks a year, then they'll throw me a couple of bucks for uh, introducing you. So if it's a good deal for you and it helps support the channels so it's a win-win so um, just check that out again at survivalonpurpose.com slash bdu cost you a buck to see if you think it'll, it'll be worthwhile for you so i really appreciate uh, you checking that out and um now let's take you down to the old stump top we're going to take a closer look at this uh cold steel kudu okay so here is the cold steel kudu and as you can see it's a pretty good size folding knife uh the overall length of this thing is 10 inches which is a pretty good size again but it weighs just 2.4 ounces. It's extremely lightweight. Features a four and a quarter inch clip point blade of two millimeter thick, five CR15 MOV steel, stainless steel with a full flat grind. And by the uh, steel choice, you can probably tell that this thing is made in China. The handle length is five and three quarter inches and is, they call it Zyx, which is a Zytel kind of a, some sort of polymer. Um, there's no line or anything. That's how they maintain the, the very lightweight, but it's very, uh, it's, it's, it feels really solid. The blade has got no play in it whatsoever, either way, forward or backward or sideways, and you can't actually adjust that. It's got some little star bits here that you can adjust it if you want to, but it's a very, very, very simple knife. This is not a flipper knife. It's, it's very traditional. The uh, MSRP in this thing is 13 bucks, and I paid eight bucks for it on Big Daddy Unlimited. So uh, let me just kind of show you how this works because I wouldn't, I've never seen this kind of knife before, but it's, it's really a pretty ingenious design. Again, this is, this is based on the classic Okapi African folding knife that's been in use for centuries, literally. So it's kind of like the, uh, the, uh, the traditional knife of Africa. So the way this works is, I'm going to show you how to open it. There's this, this, um, the back of the blade, let me, well, I'll just show you that first. So it's got this, this, this is the lock here. Got some pivot pins here and then it presses down there. So the tension of this, this, this pushes it down and there's a little slot there. And then there's a notch on the back of the blade that is engaged in that slot. So the blade won't shut because the notch is catching the slot. So you have to pull this up and just nothing but spring tension on here. It's just the tension of the metal itself. That's what the ring's for because there's a lot of tension there. So what you have to do, let me see if I can do this on camera for you. You pull this up to release that, to pull that, see it pull away. It's got to pull away from that notch. When it does, you can close it. You have to close it with your finger like, like so. Oh, now. If you, if you thought that could be dangerous, you're right. Which is why, if you look at the back of the blade, let me see if you can see that, hopefully you can see it. There's little notches in there. You see those notches? There's one there, there's one, two, three. You can, hopefully you can see those. Yeah, you can see them. So, those notches are there to keep you from cutting your fingers off. So when you pull this up, hold it here and pull it up, the way I close it is, I just give it, just pull it up, because it takes a pretty good, pretty good bit of force you can leave her with your thumb on here and pull that up and then stick your other finger out and give it just a little bit of a little bit of a push and let it catch that first notch so you see it it stops it stops if you don't push it all the way if you just give it just a little bit it'll stop at that first notch and now you can let release the tension and it'll close the rest of the way so uh yeah it's definitely not a it's not a um you know going to do quick a quick deploy edc style knife i just thought it was pretty cool i've never seen one i like these traditional kind of designs so but uh we can go ahead and do some that let me show this one more time do some that 
And I guess, I'm trying to see if I can figure out how to do this one-handed, and I really can't. I guess I could, you could hold it like that and maybe pull up on it. And, um, okay, yeah, you can, so you can sort of do it. If you hold it like that, let it kind of balance and put your thumb here and just put some tension on the, when you pull it up, it'll go. So, yeah, you can do that. But that's kind of awkward. Either way, this is not some kind of rapid deploy knife, but I thought it was cool. Let's just see um, how good a job they did over in China with the sharpening, because most cold steels I've, I've tested have been really, really sharp. And we'll just do a, the uh, redneck sharp test on this one and see. You want to? Since this is an industry standard test. All right. <laughs> Well, we're, we're, we're losing hair there right and left to try the other arm. All right, so I'm going to call this one like on, on a scale of 1 to 10 for sharpness, with 10 being like, you know, a, um, a molecular sharpness. This is about a 6, okay? It did okay, but it's, it's certainly not the sharpest sum I've seen, but, you know, pretty decent. What about the old uh, completely useless paper test? <laughs> Let's try that one. Okay, well, it slices through the paper pretty good. All right, so that's, I will call that good. I mean, I have to say the grind on the edge, if you can see that, if you can see it, it's not, it's not bad. It's pretty, pretty nice and pretty even, so um, not bad there. Let me see if I can just, so, yeah, if you hold it like this and just pull up on that, it'll, it'll shut, which is cool. What about a little, a little wood carving? We'll try a little wood carving, and that's probably going to be about it because there's not really... This is more of a novelty knife to me than anything else. Really not designed for, um, I don't know, so I guess it's designed for whatever you need it for. Maybe you could skin a kudu with this thing. So, let's see. So it's carving. Uh, not great, but carving. Let's see if it carve right here. I'll do there. It bites in pretty good though. Hmm. Well, we can try something since it's got such a unique lock. Let's just get completely crazy with it. Completely um, ridiculous with it. Back here, can you see that? Can you sort of see it? We'll try. We'll just see if we can. Okay, a little bit of a tiny. How about that? That's kind of weird, isn't it? But I was, actually, it's a pretty stinking solid lock because of that spring action on it, it's, it's not just going to come loose. It's got to, you got to have something to really pull up on that. So I was really not surprised that it, that it did that little bit of a tiny. I mean, it didn't beat it too hard, but it certainly didn't just spring loose. Carving some, carving some curls in it, and which again, don't know why, because, um, for sure, there's no sharp spine on it, so I'm not going to try to strike a ferro rod or anything with it. And again, this is probably not what it's for, but but it absolutely um, does a good job of carving. So, okay, some nice little curls there. Okay, well that was uh, uh, some practical testing with the uh, cold steel kudu and. I gotta say, you know, I just tried to figure out what to do with this knife. I really just got it because I thought it was cool. I'd never seen this before. I wanted, I wanted to check out this new lock design. I, I just really was intrigued by it. Um, and it turns out it's not a new lock design at all. It's, it's, it's centuries old, but it still is a pretty cool knife. And I was honestly pleased that it did well. It did okay in the, uh, in the edge department. You know, this is from, from being from China. They still did a pretty good job on the edge. It did gr perfect on paper cutting and a little bit on carving. You know, it doesn't have a sharp spine and that really wasn't it's, what it's designed for. But I really felt like there's something lacking in our testing. So I'm gonna break my own rule that I usually do not aerodynamic, t do, do aerodynamic testing on folding knives but this one has a really such a unique lock on it and really it's only an eight dollar knife so if it breaks it's not the end of the world but i don't think it will but anyway we're gonna go to the old balance orientation rotation device with this one an exception to my rule to not balance test um folding knives because look just be honest this knife was not designed to be thrown at a balance orientation and rotation device. It was probably more designed to like skin small game uh, as original intent. So, but 
you know, we're going to endeavor to persevere and see, see if we can get a little outside the box with this one. You want to? Let's do it. Whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, we're not going to tempt fate with that one, um, but it stuck. So I'm pretty impressed. So that's the cold steel kudu. And I think it's a pretty cool knife. Um, again, this is not going to be my EDC knife. This is probably just going to be something that I, it's like a conversation piece because it is pretty cool. It's pretty traditional. Um, I kind of think it's neat. So kind of like the, you know, like the open L knives from France, which are very traditional knives. Um, I actually think they're a lot more, probably more uh, functional and practical than this one, but I still think it's pretty cool. So um, that is it. And hopefully this has been helpful and I don't recommend balance testing this one. And again, this is, the, this is the way I'm going to close it, probably close it so I don't have a chance on cutting myself, but then you can close it the rest of the way. So anyway, um, I really appreciate you watching Survival on Purpose. I hope this video has been helpful and somewhat entertaining. Remember, survival is not an accident, so be prepared. I'll see you next time.